among the things that we were thinking about right at the in the last class um, is um, we were thinking about the fact that there is a boundary uh, that these early cells including cells that we know of today um, need to have um, and the importance of this boundary right and one of the questions that i had raised for you guys is to think about uh, you know what that boundary uh, could do right and what um, kind of advantages or disadvantages um, uh, you see for generating a boundary uh, now one of the early thoughts um, to have here is the value of such a boundary right and how that boundary could effectively have defined uh, this um, early architecture of a cell right um, and um, this boundary in cells uh, is is rather vital um, simply because it helps define what's outside and what's inside right so the nature of this boundary um, is hugely important to how um, you know cells were created and the idea of cells were created right so the idea of a cell is essentially um, a bag um, in which all these components exist um, and talk to each other and work with each other and and function right um, and and so that boundary becomes that much more important um, and as life progressed and and evolved and you know prokaryotes became eukaryotes this boundary became more and more intricate uh, you know it became more and more functionally relevant to the point that when we now look at cells in eukaryotic cells uh, this lipid um, you know membrane that we think about um, is extremely closely tied to everything that the cell does to uh, you know what the cell does how it does it um, all of this is dependent on this uh, boundary right um, so so that's how vital the boundary is um, an example of uh, you know this relevance uh, of this boundary this lipid bilayer stems from the fact that uh, so much of that interface, so much of uh, proteins and other components that um, uh, line that surface um, or that membrane um, are integrated, are either uh, bound to the plasma membrane on the outside or on the inside, are integrated into the cell membrane. Um, and their uh, functionality, okay, these proteins have now all evolved in such a way uh, that they work best in the lipid bilayer for a long time people did not think much about the lipid bilayer they thought okay well it's just a, a sea of lipids and things float around in them and that's about it right that it's a boundary it has no functional relevance really it's just a way to kind of separate outside from inside right but as we have thought more about it understood this better what we now know uh, right is that um, that there is um, uh, you know, a huge role uh, for this lipids in, in defining uh, the functioning of cells, right? So this sea of lipids, um, you know, if you remember the movie, The Inner Life of the Cell, you saw this thing um, essentially, um, you know, a wobbly, uh, very flexible structure, right, into, into which these uh, proteins are all present. Um, this sea of lipids also is not just a uniform layer of lipids. With time, we have understood that this sea of lipids is actually uh, more complex than that. Uh, the sea of lipids has many kinds of lipids, right? Some of these, these lipids actually come together um, and make, um, you know, compact uh, lipid uh, floats uh, on the plasma membrane. So these are like tiny islands of lipids that are floating in the sea of lipids, right? And these islands are referred to as lipid rafts, right? So they are uh, regions where proteins can come, sit together, talk together, function together. Um, so the lipid is no longer considered a, a very, um, you know, naive or even uh, inert uh, boundary of the cell. It's a very active boundary. And it's, uh, you know, this edge is hugely important for how proteins in the cell work um, and how the cell eventually works itself, right? So, so that's the amazing thing about the, about the membrane. And there are many models that have been proposed. I'm not going into these, you know, because this is really um, beyond the preview of what we are discussing today of how this membrane should look. There is something called a fluid mosaic model. And if you want, please go look this up. Uh, right, uh, which 
uh, is one of the most uh, common accepted models or the best accepted models for how this um, you know lipid uh, bilayer could look and function right um we will come back to the two movies that um uh, that we want to look at at the end um this architecture now looks like this right and now this is a cross section so you have an outer leaflet and inner leaflet which are coming together um and uh, the outer leaflet has a mixture of lipids so it's not one kind of lipid it's different kinds of lipids the inner leaflet has a mixture of lipids the outer leaflet and the inner leaflet now we think could have slightly different compositions as well right and this will matter to the functionality um, of the cells there are many kinds of lipids that can be part of such a bilayer so when you look at different um, uh, you know membranes inside the cell uh, the plasma membrane and and other cellular membranes uh, you know that um, that the lipid composition now could be variable and this is again something that has been uh, characterized proteins uh, could be things that are uh, you know integrated only in the outer leaflet only in the inner leaflet there are proteins some proteins that go through which are transmembrane proteins right uh, but they all work to kind of allow the outer environment to be distinctly different from the inner environment and also allow for the uh, membrane to be able to communicate what's happening outside to the inside of the cell so when we come to receptors and signaling we will we will discover how something happening on the outside is communicated as a change in the structure of the receptor to the inside of the cell and that's outside in signaling and similarly things happening on the inside can be communicated outside which is inside out signaling in cells right um the lipids as i uh, as we talked about yesterday uh, they have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic core um and and that's the architecture depending upon the kind of lipids the nature of that hydrophilic head and hydrophobic core could vary um the kind of kinks that they have or how straight the lipids are um could make a difference to how they are packed together um the really nice thing about lipids in, in an aqueous environment is that they can they have the energy to come together uh, to as molecules um and maintain this architecture right so when you see a sea, a sea of lipid that floats as a boundary uh, inherently this is coming because of the kind of uh, interactions that these lipids have with each other allowing them to stay together and create a boundary the advantage of this boundary is this boundary uh, you know can be broken it can be modified it can be bent um, and all those become very valuable when you think about the functions that the lipids do right um, there are different classes of lipids uh, there are uh, you know phosphatidylserines there are glycolipids there are sterols like cholesterol um, and the architecture of these lipids makes a big difference to uh, you know how they are assembled how they are put together you don't have to know all the details about the lipids at this point of time you just need to know the fact that there are multiple lipids um, and they could be assembled this way uh, in to make the membrane right so as i said the nature of this uh, tail of lipids uh, makes a big difference to how they get packed right and molecules like sterols like cholesterols have very flat tails which means they can be packed more tightly which is one more reason why they can come together to create a compact kind of float uh, this lipid raft that we talked about right in cells so this is the assembly we are looking at um and as as i as shown here you know the, this has a very defined thickness um it has a significant amount of flexibility it also has a significant amount of strength right so it's not something that can very easily be ruptured unless and until a certain amount of force is applied um and there are innumerable number of proteins that have learned over evolution to to modify the membrane right and this is the really remarkable thing everything from the bending of the membrane uh, to creating folds um, you know proteins have found a way to work with this lipid uh, membrane um, and do things with it right um as i mentioned that there is uh, the other really nice thing about um, lipid membranes is that uh, you know when they self assemble uh, there is a tendency for them to make a energetically favorable um, arrangement uh, that inevitably is is in the form of a sphere right which uh, when they come together almost immediately defines an outside and an inside 
right? And this could be one more big reason why this membrane um, or the origin of the cells uh, as we know it uh, could have began with a lipid bilayer because of their ability to assemble into these energetically favorable structures, right? Um, and as this um, image shows you, there are many components in the, inside the cell that are made up of uh, lipid membranes. Um, and the fact is that um, the composition of these lipids in these different membranes could also be variable, right? This is again to show you how cholesterol can help pack lipids uh, better um, and create more tighter structures which are more rigid. Um, and so they have a slightly different um, fluidity and a slightly different architecture than the rest of the membrane, which is the reason why these become islands of signaling, right? Islands where receptors and other things can come and park themselves and do things inside the cell membrane. Again, just to kind of give you a sense of all the different types of lipids, how their tails will be variable. You don't have to remember these things. This is just matter of information. Um, the composition of lipids, as I said, the relative ratios um, are also very important. Uh, in mammalian uh, lipids, uh, you have um, glycerolipids, which make about 65%, 10% are sphingolipids, and, and sterols make about 25%. Um, the one of the because we talked about the micro mitochondria, I just added this year that the mitochondrial glycerolipids, interestingly, among the characteristics uh, that allow us to think that the mitochondria could have had a bacterial origin or a prokaryotic origin, um, is the fact that the mitochondrial glycerolipids have um, an origin that makes them seem like bacterial lipids. Isn't that fascinating? That you know, along with the fact that they have a double membrane. Uh, you know, the composition of those lipids uh, is also indicative of the fact that this endosymbiont theory may have actually been, uh, you know, been true, uh, right? Um, and as I said, different kinds of proteins, um, you know, the, the proteins make up almost 50% of what's on the membrane now. Initially, this may have evolved as only a lipid boundary, but now the proteins have uh, integrated into the lipids and these proteins are all designed with the lipid in mind. Okay, not just on the plasma membrane, but even inside the cell in the different organelles where uh, proteins work with lipids. Uh, the interesting thing is these proteins now all uh, work in the lipid environment uh, the best, right? Which means they have evolved in that environment in such a way that now that's what, uh, you know, their architecture, their interactions, their functionality is all dependent on this lipid. And that's the beauty of this um, system, so to speak. Lip, you know, proteins are present on the outside, on the inside, transmembrane proteins, uh, you know, all of which are present on the on the membrane. Um, the that's, of so, bilayer is enriched in sphingolipids. so I'm going to just play this part of the movie, the inner life of the cell, uh, before we go ahead and look at the, um, the other stuff. And now uh, you know a little bit about the membrane. Uh, you know, now you have a better understanding of what these uh, lipids mean. You know, what are these things that are floating around? You have a sense of what this uh, floating island is. Uh, it's an island that is made up of lipids and cholesterol, which is called a membrane raft. You can see uh, that island that is now floating around, right? Um, and then... Uh, you know, these are moving around. And remember, look at the lipid uh, that is uh, present here. You know, as I move this back and forth, you can see it is like um, a sea, right? Where it is constantly bubbling around, right? And, and, and so the lipid can be modified, uh, you know, bent, um, you know, moved around in different ways. Uh, this is a cross section and this is a beautiful image because, you know, it really lets you see everything I spoke about, the outer leaflet, the inner leaflet, their composition being slightly different, uh, the lipid, um, cholesterol rich lipid domains, which have a slightly different organization, which is distinctly different from the rest of the membrane. Uh, the fact that receptors can go through, right, and are anchored in these domains the way they are, uh, you know, all of this is contributing. And as I move it back and forth, you can see um, how everything is jiggling around, right? Uh, moving around in a way that allows these uh, lipids to hold uh, these proteins and allow them to function, right? So now when you think about a cell, you're not thinking about a flat line, right? Because that's how we drew a cell. But now you're thinking about something that is constantly changing, you know, constantly moving around that can be bent, that can be curled, that can be pushed through corners and spaces, which is all possible uh, 
because of this lipid boundary, right? The next class, we are going to focus on something uh, that, that looks like this. This is actually um, a geodesic dome that was built at ICER um, a few years ago. Um, and this was part of a project, um, you know, that uh, that was done here. Uh, and, and this is all assembled using, you know, sticks, bamboo sticks and, and rubber bands, right, um, and ties. Um, and, and this kind of architecture, this geodesic dome always remind, reminds me um, of the cytoskeleton because that's the kind of architecture, the cytoskeleton, this kind of architecture and this kind of arrangement in terms of what it does um, is what the cytoskeleton is about. So, so where we are headed is towards the ge geodesic dome, the structural dome that is inside the cell that kind of keeps or holds this floppy membrane that is floating around, right? So that's what we will get to uh, in the next class.